Okay, so we are beginning to talk about something that's known as weight decay and augmented error, we already know about it. So let's talk a little bit about weight decay. Now just to summarize what we've been doing until now is that there were the soft order constraints for a given value of a budget and then there was this constraint minimization problem for E in and then we came up with an equivalent problem that was unconstrained minimization with a different function that was known as the augmented error, right? We came up with that, that had two terms in it. And then there was this lambda, which is the regularization parameter. And, uh, and, and basically that is a, like a free parameter, right? And uh, what, we found, what we can see from that term is that when lambda is zero, we have the usual in sample error. But if lambda is greater than zero, then minimizing the augmented error corresponds to minimizing a penalized in sample error, right? So basically the value of lambda was nothing but something that was like a knob. It controlled uh, essentially the amount of regularization that we want in our problem. And then in, in addition to this lambda, we had this term, W transpose W, right? So this is the penalty term. My lambda is the, the knob with which I'm penalizing, and then penalty term is W transpose W. This, is, this, this penalty term is enforcing a trade-off between making the in-sample error small and making the weight small. Right? And so that is why this is known as weight decay. Okay, all of that is great. Fine, so what, what exactly are we trying to do here? Well, we are trying to find out the WREG or the regularization weights here using the augmented error that we defined. Right, And so the good thing is that we get to pick lambda. Right, Depends on a lot of factors and we'll see more about it. So basically what I'm trying to do is minimize the augmented error, which was nothing but minimize E n of W plus lambda over n W transpose. Okay, so again, like rewriting or expanding what this is in terms of its definition. And I want to write things that we already know. So not el elaborating them again, it's going to be a repeat. Uh, again, like rearranging terms, so essentially I'm trying to minimize something like this. Uh, w transpose z transpose z minus, I'm just like expanding the equation. Z transpose y plus y transpose y plus lambda. Fine. And or this can be written as minimizing, just like rearranging a few things here and there. Z transpose z plus lambda i from this, comes from this. And this minus 2 z transpose y plus y plus y transpose y. Okay, so if I, we are trying to minimize this expression, basically we have to find the gradient and set it equal to zero. So basically find the gradient and set it equal to zero. So how do we do that? Let's do that here. There is no space left. So all I'm doing is finding the gradient of this expression here and setting it equal to zero. So what I'm going to get is two times and you can verify that it's I mean it's quite evident if you just look at the equation minus 2z transpose y equals 0 right and you can see here that this one is a positive semi-definite and this here is a positive definite so together both of them make this term invertible, which is good news for us because we are trying to solve for my W, right? So if I solve for W, I'm going to get W-R-E-G, not W-L-I-N. -W In fact, I'm doing a W-R-E-G uh, because this is the regularized one, right? And this is going to be Z transpose Z plus lambda I inverse Z transpose Y. This thing here, this expression here, is termed as the regularized, let me write it down, this is the regularized linear regression feature transform. Okay, so why is the name? Well, the regularized comes, comes from the regularization parameter, so basically we get to pick that, of course, higher the value, you, you get to pick the smaller weights, right? So basically you can control uh, the weights. 
So you're penalizing large weights through this lambda, right? Penalizing large weights. Right? And we call this feature transform because obviously we are in the Z space. So we're trying to keep it as generic as possible. Right? So this is the final uh, expression for my weights that are required in this. Okay, so having having done all of this, having understood the idea behind regularization of why we are penalizing weights, let's try to look at some experiments and, and, and basically try to understand what's happening. And this is like going back to some of the experiments that we looked at some time back. So let's look at these. Okay, so again, I'm repeating the problem is this, the unconstrained optimization problem. And lambda was our input parameter. We can choose that. And so we just wanted to know what happens when you're choosing like different lambdas. So obviously when lambda is zero, as I said earlier, all I'm doing is minimizing my E in. That was my usual initial expression, right? And if you remember, this was like uh, working with these five points that had a lot of noise, right? That was my data in this one, the first picture here. And obviously lambda is zero. So I was trying to fit this fourth order polynomial, which is obviously a complex model. And we saw what happened, right? It, it went like in all over the place. Now, what we are doing here in the second picture is that we are applying some penalty in the form of lambda, right? And so we are like our knob is really like not as harsh, right? It's really small if you think about it. And so with a small amount of lambda, just a small amount of lambda, as you can see, we get a huge improvement. It almost fits the data, huge improvement. Right, and overfitting we saw was there when noise let us go astray, and then a regularization came to the rescue. Right, a little bit of lambda, a little bit of cure, I would say, helped us fit exactly like with what we had. Okay, so fine. Basically, what we are seeing here is like weight decay applied to this example with different values of the regularization parameter. Now. As you can see, when we start increasing, like we are, we're really dialing the knob towards the right, so we're really increasing this like value of my lambda, see what's happening. As you can see, like very little regularization was like the best choice here because too much regularization is giving us like a flat curve, right? Basically at the expense of the in-sample fit. So basically what, what's happening is it's like ignoring a lot. If, if you think about it, this lambda is, is, is huge. So what we're doing is we're just like ignoring a, a large part of, of the data. And then this thing here, eventually when lambda is one, is doing something that's known as underfitting, right? Of course, overfitting was taking care of every intricacy in the data. And so it was taking care of, uh, it was getting like in all directions because of the noise. But in this case, we are like ignoring everything, right? And so that's why this is underfitting. So you can see this example of an underfit. Okay, so overfitting versus underfitting. Generally, as you can see, the, as the regularization parameter increases, we move, and this is the expected E out, which is like E in plus something, right? And so what's happening here is that we are um, moving in the, like from this region of overfitting to underfitting, right? That's what, what's going on here. And you can see that this is like more of a out of sample performance, like for some regularization parameters here. And that's what E out is, is essentially telling us. O overfitting occurs in the shaded region because the lower E in, that means the lower lambda, leads to higher E out. So that's why this, this is, the, this is uh, overfitting. And then underfitting it like occurs here in this region. So that's when lambda is too large because the learning algorithm has too little flexibility to fit the data. So it just like avoided everything in the data. So basically, like ideally speaking, we should be somewhere in this range, mostly I would say in this range, although this is like the range of underfitting. But then like generally we select that range because like the best spot, uh, uh, a little more than the best spot because like the price we pay for overfitting is huge. So that's why we are usually in this line. Of course, we don't want to underfit as well. But like in practice, that's what we do, right? So this is the relationship between increased, increasing the regularization parameter and then overfitting and underfitting. 
Uh, okay, so let's look at some other sort of experimental outcome then it's up some some more detail of what's going on when there is some noise and how is the level of noise affecting our regularization parameter and then how can we see that the, like it varies with error and so this one is for stochastic noise so this one is stochastic noise let me just write it and this is deterministic so just like look at let me write it down. This is deterministic. This is stochastic. Okay, so what is going on? Obviously, when there is no noise for this blue curve here, there is no need for regularization, right? And so when the sigma squared is zero, that means there is no noise. And so there is no need for any regularization, which is not a surprise because there is no uh, stochastic. And even here, no deterministic or no stochastic noise, right, in, in, in both the cases. So that's fine, right? Now, as we add like more stochastic noise here in this picture here, right? As we add more noise, the overall performance degrades as expected. So obviously if we didn't have any, like you can see in this region up here, right? If we didn't have any regularization parameter, well, my, my error would have been like huge. So it starts to come down as I introduce my regularization, right? And then that is what is expected, right? So the optimal value for the regularization parameter increases with noise, uh, which is expected based on like the potential to overfit increase as the noise increases and then so on, right? And so that's what this, this is showing us. And then different levels of noise obviously will have higher error. And so you can see if this was the optimal lambda for this one, the optimal lambda is more for that one, right? So it's like uh, more noise and then, and then we need more regularization in that case. Now this picture here on the right hand side shows us what's happening when we add deterministic noise, which means like when the target complexity was high, right? But and keeping everything else same. So then this was also a demonstration. We see a similar kind of a trend. If you look at the trend, it's somewhat similar, except that we don't have the stochastic noise. So it's not like we have uh, like any measurement error, but rather the, the target function itself is, is too complex. And so still we see uh, like that regularization helps generally, right? And so whether like either one of them is present, stochastic or deterministic noise, it is helpful to regularize. And the more noise there is, the larger amount of regularization you need, as you can tell from these experiments. Uh, okay, so finally, a little bit about uh, the weight decay. Right, so we're here talking about the weight decay a little bit, and we already defined what, uh, like, how we express uh, weight decay. And here in this one, we are talking a little bit more about it essentially. So, what is going on here? Here, this is my uh, uniform weight decay, so this is the, the, the value for that, right? So, do we have like choices? Basically, what we're trying to say here, do we have like uh, choices for a regularizer and uh, what are those choices and and can we find like some kind of a, a perfect fit for that so there are regularizers that we can work with that are known right and so some of them are shown here so regularization as we said is, is, is a necessary evil especially like when working with data because there is noise all the time right so this one is known as the regular uh, this is known as the uniform regularizer or like sometimes it's denoted like this i think the book denotes like this and then this one here is like a low order this one is a low order regularizer and the pictures corresponding to each one of them are showing how each one like what is the result of e using this regularizer or weight decay uh, and the like lambda and what is the result on the e out Right. So if you look at the first one, it like the first one, this one, by, by the first one, I mean this one, it encourages all weights to be small uniformly. Right. Because this is the, the, the weight decay term that's there. OK. What is the second one doing? Like the second one is like paying more attention to the higher order weights because this Q is nothing but like a, a parameter that, that that is, again, kind of a weight that's attached to that. Right. So. Basically, we are trying to like penalize the higher weights more in a certain way, right? And that is what is like somewhat evident here, if you can see uh, in this this picture here. 
So if we are using this kind of a, a, a weight decay, and then with a very small, like lambda, you can see that this uh, underfitting starts to happen like pretty quickly, right? And so that's that's like in the shaded region, E out increases as you decrease E in, and the regularization parameter is, is small, and so there is not enough of a constraint on the learning, leading to a decreased performance because of overfitting. Now in the unshaded region, the regularization parameter is too large, over constraining the learning and not giving it enough flexibility to fit the data, leading to decreased performance because of underfitting, basically. But the only difference between this and this is that the overfitting and underfitting like have a very small sort of like a sharp curve there, right? So this underfitting begins to, to rise and that is quite evident because we are explicitly using this parameter Q along with the, the width. So that's kind of a... Uh, comparison of both of them and so finally we are looking at this one and this is not weight decay but rather it's weight growth so basically these are good regularizers if we generally talk about them but this one is not and why because this is uh, like this is corresponding to weight growth as you can see because like this is one over w q squared so it's it's doing the opposite of what we want the weight um, decay to do right so it's, it's encouraging uh, large weights versus decay so decay actually encourages small weights so you can see in this case weight growth does not help the cause of overfitting right because if we happen to choose weight growth as our regularizer we would like be okay as long as we have a good way to pick the regularization parameter the optimal regularization parameter in this case is going to be lambda equals zero, right? Because we are no worse off than not regularizing. That's essentially what this picture is telling us. Okay, so in general, like the lesson learned here is that we don't want weight growth when we are trying to regularize in general. Uh, okay, so moving on. Finally, again, choosing a regularizer, we saw three types, right? We want something uh, that, that uh, leads to weight decay and not weight growth. So that's like the first thing. There isn't like, I wouldn't say there is a perfect regularizer. We can constrain basically the, like by definition, the perfect regularizer is that constrained in the direction of the target function. But because the target function is known, what we can do best is constrain in the direction of a smoother, usually simpler hypothesis. So after all that analysis, again, this points to a more simpler hypothesis. Uh, because there is noise in the data, there is no way getting rid of that noise. And as I said, like even though we don't know the direct, like the target function or the noise, regularization helps by reducing the impact of that noise, right? And so weight decay type of regularizer uh, constrains the like the learning towards smoother hypotheses. And this helps because stochastic noise is like non-smooth, right? And again, even deterministic noise, the part of the target function, right, which cannot be modeled, is also non-smooth. So constraining the learning towards smoother hypotheses hurts our ability to overfit the noise more than it hurts our ability to fit the useful information. So that's why simpler is, is, is the uh, goal, I would say. Okay. And finally, to sum up everything, we have like stochastic noise. We cannot do anything about it. Well, good features help to reduce deterministic noise. So some of the important regularization um, observations are it helps to combat what noise like does, right? So it basically helps us fight that, especially when n is, is small, which means we don't have that much data. And uh, in terms of the bias variance, we are sacrificing a little bit of the, of the bias, but then we are making a huge improvement in variance by regularizing. Well, the VC angle in this case is that you're using a small hypothesis set without sacrificing too much of E in, right? Okay, so uh, before we end, we can also look at the augmented error that we came up with the unconstrained uh, for the unconstrained minimization problem. So that was essentially equal to E in plus this uh, penalty term, right? And so this omega of H was nothing but this like weight decay, right? And this is this can be thought of as a like an equivalent of like e out in in a certain way. So it, maybe it's a it's a proxy of of uh, uh, like uh, e out. So basically, we can also think of like this term is somewhat in some ways 
uh, intuitively equivalent to what like we saw here, right? So E uh, augmented uh, can beat E in as a proxy for E out, right? But, so, but, but again, there is a, a huge but, it depends on the value of lambda, right? So basically it depends on uh, what lambda we are choosing, right? So to end this lecture, we have identified overfitting as a problem. Noise like stochastic and deterministic was a cause and regularization is a cure. In the next lecture, we'll talk about another cure that is known as validation. So with this, uh, I'll end this lecture. Um, thank you.